Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Liam, this is my hobby room, and welcome to my channel. Thanks for clicking on my video. Before we go any further, if you like Gunpla content, if you like what I do on my channel, please like the video, subscribe to my channel down below for more awesome Gunpla content. And if you want to get some cool Gunpla for yourself, use my code LHR10 at bchobbies.com. There's lots of Gunpla there, sweet, a lot of cool stuff. I think you'll find some you really like. Today we're doing a painted build video where I build a kit and uh, modify it a little bit and then paint it up and then I'll talk about it after. And I want to do this through the lens of a gunpla oriented character study for a character that I really enjoy from the original 0079 Mobile Suit Gundam. The character that I want to talk about is a lieutenant for the Earth Federation Space Forces named Salem Mass. She served as a lieutenant on the White Base during the One Year War and would go on to become one of the most influential female Gundam characters to date. She's super cool. I really like her. She was born under the name Artesia Som Daikun, the sole daughter of Zeon Zum Daikun, a philosopher in the Universal Century timeline. And Sela's brother, Kasval Rem Daikun, would then go on to become Shar Aznable, the Red Comet of Zeon. These siblings were both soldiers that would face off against one another many times throughout the One Year War. I thought a cool idea for a video would be to take a character and uh, take their mobile suit and kind of make a custom version of it and talk about them a bit, highlighting the character and why I like them, highlighting the mobile suit and why I think it's cool. And in this case, I wanted to ponder the question, what if Salem Mass got her own custom mobile suit near the latter half of the One Year War? How would it change things? Would it make things different? Would it have changed certain events? And the mobile suit that I envisioned her getting in my little headcanon here is the Gym Command Space Type. So as an older HGUC kit, its proportions, its articulation, and to a certain extent, its level of detail are a bit lacking when you put them next to more modern kits. However, however, it's still a really interesting older HGUC kit with a lot of customizing potential. So what I'm going to do is modify it, uh, and you'll see me do that in the background. Uh, but I'm going to turn it into Salem Mass's custom unit. So when I finish the painted build, I'll show you what it looks like on my turntable, and I'll talk a little bit about my headcanon fanfic that I've put together on what it would be like if Salem Mass got this custom mobile suit to aid her and her friends during the latter half of the One Year War. Something I really enjoy about the original 0079 Mobile Suit Gundam is that it shows characters who are traumatized by war who do not want to fight, and it really explores their psyche as they grapple with having to do what they have to do to survive and protect their friends. Sayla Mass, the subject of this video, handled herself very well under pressure, much better than the protagonist of the series. She is well liked and looked up to by many of the other characters. She knows how to get the job done. She piloted the titular Gundam Mobile Suit as well as the G Armor. The G Armor was a mobile armor with various different configurations that could combine with different mobile suits from the white base for different tactile situations. Behind the scenes, the G Armor was something that the producers of the show, uh, the ones with the money, wanted to include so they could create accessories for all the different toys and model kits and stuff. So it looks pretty goofy, but it is also kind of a, a fun little piece of Gundam history. Throughout the One Year War in Universal Century 0079, both sides raced to develop more powerful weapons. For the majority of the series, the Federation's prototype mobile suit, the RX-78-2 Gundam, was the most advanced machine around. And to keep up with the forces of Xeon and their specialized mobile suits, the Federation simplified and mass-produced the Gundam, resulting in the Gym, or Gundam mass-produced. By the time the Gym was developed in November of 0079, the Gym's predecessor, the RX-78-2 Gundam, was already outdated. However, the Gundam had an advantage over the other mobile suits, its new type pilot, Amuro Ray. Unfortunately, many of the Federation's gym pilots were rookies by contrast, so you tend to watch them get shot down and blown up a lot in the series. Nevertheless, several different gym variants and successors were developed, and had increased mobility and power. Because of this unit's late deployment though, it was seldom used to its full potential, and that is why I chose this specific mobile suit for this project. Now, Sayla Mass does quite a bit in the show, she's actually quite an important character, but she is shackled to the G-Armor due to the production company's requirement of having it in the show to sell toys. Uh, so, in my headcanon, Sayla's brief stint piloting the Gundam, her practice inside a simulator, and her time flying the G-Armor in its various different configurations would give her the necessary experience to fully utilize the increased performance of the Gym Command. Also, as a crew member and combat pilot on board the White Base, which had developed quite a name for itself, it's not such a stretch to think that she might have been given her own customized mobile suit when the new units were rolled out. 
So just to talk about what I'm doing here in the background is I'm making a series of small modifications across this kit that work together to give the gym command slightly more heroic proportions. Using plot plate, I lengthened the waist, the forearms, the wrists, the thighs, the shins. I just measured and sawed the pieces in half, inserted some plot plate, and cemented them back together. It's a super basic technique to elongate limbs. I took care to close any gaps that I created with putty, and I also made a commander's antenna and attached it to the side of the head. I used some photo etch parts to fill in some of the rectangular vents on the legs and drilled out some of the thrusters and Vulcan barrels to enhance those details, give them a bit more three-dimensionality. I've linked all the tools and supplies that I'm using down below in the description, so if you're curious, that's where you can find those things. You may have noticed that I'm using some aftermarket resin cast hands. This is because I find the hands on the kits of this era just disproportionately large and lacking in detail. They just look like Hulk hands to me. They're kind of funny. Uh, so these new hands look very similar to the HD Builders parts set, and I think that's a good stand-in for this kit. So here's a fun tangent. Uh, now just because this kit isn't super flashy or, or because it doesn't have brand new engineering doesn't mean it's not a good kit. I think the Gym Command is a great, affordable high grade that you can use as a base to create all different types of unique custom mobile suits. With a few basic modeling skills, for instance, I was able to modify the basic design and make something that I find interesting. And it was so much fun to work on. I've been really trying to take my time with my builds these days and just savor this part because this is the part of the hobby that I really love. There are lots of people online who just snap together their kits and call it a day, and that, that's fine, it's all well and good, but let's be real, Gunpla is expensive, and to me it's such a huge waste not to do any actual modeling. Uh, to invest in some basic tools and paints, it may seem expensive, but they'll last you way longer than you think, and you'll be able to use them to actually further your skills. So, yeah, that's just something I felt like I had to say. Anyways, back to the video. I tried to keep Sayla's character and her experiences in the series in mind when coming up with this custom project. Uh, what types of equipment she would use, how she would fight, would she have changed any events with this new loadout, that sort of thing. And while she's mostly using the Gym Command's regular loadout, two beam sabers, a shield, and the beam spray gun, I thought she might also use the Gundam's beam rifle as a kind of mounted cannon, sort of bridging the gap between the white base's other mobile suits, uh, the gun cannon and the Gundam, and this one. Plus, she'd be used to this weapon. So to make up for what would be an increased power draw for this weapon, I scratch built this little energy tank and uh, kind of mixed together some parts and some scratch build bits to make a little articulated arm that attaches this to the backpack. That means Sayla could spend more time out defending the white base without having to resupply. So here's the kit before any modifications, just closed seam lines. You can see its proportions are a little shorter, a little squat. That's pretty typical for kits from this era. So here is the kit with all the modifications, the extended limbs, the photo etch parts, the scratch built parts, the kit bash pieces, all the putty. This is one of my favorite parts to see a model kit in. The time just before you prime the kit when you can see all of the work that's gone into it. Uh, and it really allows you to take stock of what you've been doing and how much work still needs to go. Now I just have to mask off the visor and the camera and start priming. So here is my halfway point. Uh, with some masking, I was able to achieve pretty much exactly what I set out to do. I masked off and painted these yellow bands onto the arm and the thigh of the mobile suit. I just thought that would be kind of like a fun little signifier that it's Sela's mobile suit. Uh, well, here's the kit with all the basic painting and decals done. You can see it's very glossy uh, because obviously decals and weathering oils and all that will slide around better on a glossy surface as opposed to a matte surface where they, where they kind of tend to bite uh, and spread around. So now I've got to do some chipping and weathering and then matte coat it. And here is the finished product, the fruit of my labor, if you will, the Gym Command Sela Custom, my theoretical idea as to if Sela Mass had inherited a mobile suit near the end of the war. I think it would have been really, really exciting to give her a mobile suit. It's kind of one of my biggest gripes about the original series is that she just stuck with this really goofy looking mobile armor the entire time, but you know, it was a behind the scenes thing, that's okay. My idea behind the colors was to do a bit of psychological warfare, as if to trick Xeon pilots into thinking that they're fighting the Federation's Gundam, as it would be moving around too fast for them to do any real proper visual identification. 
I figured Sayla would become a pretty big force to be reckoned with on the battlefield, but she'd be more of a strategic and defensive fighter just based on her personality. Sayla isn't trying to kill anybody. That was never her goal as a character. She's trying to defend her shipmates and her friends. And therefore, I don't really see any major events changing in the storyline as she's not killing any key players. But I think the white base and its mobile suits would have taken much less damage in the Battle of Abawaku at the end there. And most likely, at some point, she would have been able to break loose to help Amuro fight off her brother, Shar Aznable. Though, again, I don't think she'd be trying to kill Shar. Uh, if anything, she might be trying to put, like, put herself between them and stop the fighting. And that might have been a really cool way to kind of redo the Lala moment, where Lala gets killed doing the same thing earlier in the series. Um, but in this instance, have it work and have her not die. Maybe Shar gets away or whatever. I just think that would have been a really interesting way to reframe that part of the story. This kit was super fun to work on. I want to do more custom projects like this and, uh, you know, talk a little bit about the characters. Maybe I'll try and stay on topic a little bit more, but you know how it is <laughs> on this channel. I'm a babbler. So, <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the process thus far and the finished build. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, which I did. If you like this kind of character spotlight formula, leave a comment down below and let me know because this is something that I really enjoy and I'm kind of trialing it. See if it works? I don't know. Remember, if you want to get yourself some cool Gunpla kits, go to bchobbies.com and use my discount code at checkout, LHR10. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever and whenever you are. Take care of one another and I'll see you guys next time on Liam's Hobby Room. Yeah.